For now, let's stay on the previous week's action as we welcome in our player of the week. Uh, big fan, if anyone out there who is struggling on the fashion side of things, Pete Steinberg perhaps, get this guy on speed dial because he is he's a fashionista of the Major League Rugby world. Uh, great player, played out of position as we'll talk about and did a great job and, and deserving for our player of the week this week. So let's bring him in, Billy Meeks from the LA Guiltinis. Uh, it was pretty late on in the week. I think um, DC mentioned to me after the game the week before that, because um, I obviously played 20 minutes when we lost a few people. Uh, he mentioned to me after the game that there's a, there's a possibility that they actually might need me to fill in there. Um, so he sort of gave me the heads up, but then, um, yeah, it all sort of snowballed throughout the week. And um, as Swoop was fit to play 13, uh, it sort of just, yeah, it sort of worked out all right. And I suppose the, the way that we sort of play gen in general attack um, and defense sort of allows me to roam anyway. And it just sort of meant we had an extra ball player on the field, I suppose, in a sense. And um, just tried to get out of everyone's way when it came to set piece time. <laughs> no, I've, I've never I've never played black row um, at all, um, not even when I was a kid. But um, obviously the breakdown side of things is something that I enjoy anyway, um, playing in the centers. and. Um, it's something that I picked up when I was playing in England uh, under Laurie Fisher, who's obviously at the Brumbies now, and he um, he prides himself on his breakdown detail and that side of the game. So um, I was fortunate enough to work under him for a few years, and then um, yeah, I suppose playing back row, you're a little bit more in and around the breakdown, so there's a bit more opportunity. But um, yeah, the line out was a funny one because I, I obviously ran out with my legs strapped up as you do as a, as a jumping option. And uh, as soon as I got on the field, the first line out, Chris Robshaw said to me, pretty sure they're not going to throw to Billy so we can mark we can mark everywhere else. So I was just standing there with my hands up in the front of the line out and I was like, just throw it to me. But um, no, it was, it was a bit of a laugh and I'm, I'm, glad, we, um, I'm glad we came away with the win and um, I was able to do a job there for the boys. Um, yeah, it has been a bit of a journey. I, um, I sort of ended up here, or ended up, my professional career started sort of Sort of the opposite to how it starts for most players in Australia. I suppose when you're in Australia, you come up through the school system, you either play Australian 20s or you go into the club system and then you obviously fight for a sort of rugby contract. Um, where mine was a little bit different is when I finished playing with the Australian under 20s and the sevens, I actually couldn't get a sort of rugby contract. I was obviously trying, I was in a few academies and um, but to be honest, I probably just wasn't good enough at the time looking back. Um, but I obviously had an opportunity that popped up overseas to have a trial with uh, a team called Bristol um, and that didn't really work out at the time. They had a pretty full playing roster and um, Gloucester at the time had a few injuries. So I was pretty lucky to go over there and start training with them. And then another few boys got injured um, and I, I made my debut um, about six months after being in the UK, coming from club rugby in a premiership game at Twickenham in front of 80,000 people. So it was, it was a bit of a whirlwind and I was, I think I was 22, 23 um, when I made my debut. And from there, I played a few good games, ended up signing with Gloucester, stayed there for three really good seasons. Um, and that's when I got the opportunity to come back and play Super Rugby, which is obviously all green. Uh, first with the Western Force and then um, moved to the Rebels for a couple of years as well. And then uh, here I am in LA. So I've sort of been all around the block and um, been fortunate enough to play at some pretty cool teams. But um, yeah, loving it here, obviously. It's all about trying to manipulate the defence, right? So. So when you do your pick and goes with the forwards, it's all about great body position and it's all about good support. There's way too much for my liking as a coach, turnovers for breakdown steals that happen near the line. Like there's zero excuse for that to happen. I think I saw San Diego did it against LA. They had the ball, they were near the line, they, they had a pick and go, and that's just the lack of accuracy, both by the ball player and the supporter. So you've got to make sure that you've got your body position right, that the ball carrier is really fighting to be able to get place that ball back and the support are taking away hands, right? So you've got to do that. You want to pick and go the same way. And the reason why you want to pick and go the same way is you want to be able to exhaust the defense on that side. And as you, you know, and so, and so the options are exhaust the, the, the defense on that side and eventually you'll find a little hole, right? So you want to find a little bit of space that requires you to go a little bit faster. Right, so when you see that space, you want to be able to go a little bit faster, but with the forwards, you're going to basically score if you go the same way. But with the backs, you're going to score if you change direction. And the reason why that is, is that the forwards pick and go, they're attracting defenders to the, to the side that they're attacking, which means that you're not creating space on that side for the backs. 
right? You're actually, because you, when you pick and go, you're not actually going to be taking out any of the back defenders. So really, really good back attack in that in that situation is you pick and go to the right, you pick and go, to, you keep going to the right, and then the back swing left, right? So when enough defenders have been drawn to that side, the back swing left because you have a trail of forwards that will all be tight. And it's going to be very diff difficult for the defensive backs to follow you and get to that fast line. So finish your breaks, use your set piece, forwards go the same way, backs change their direction. All right, Pete, let's pick this weekend's game. New York at Toronto in Atlanta. New York. New York. I'm going with you on that one. I, I, think, I think New I York think to New bounce York, back. I, I think so. So Toronto, I think, are doing two things. So first of all, they lost Spencer Jones. Um, looked like a pretty bad injury. Uh, mm -hmm. That's going to hurt Canada. Um, but I think I think Toronto are, are going to help Canada play well by playing the players they need to play and then looking at some of the younger players. So New York are in the playoff spot. Um, you know, I think I think New York win this. I think they win it, you know, 32-15 or something like that. Yeah, it's, it could be an interesting roster coming out for Toronto as well. So I, I still think that they've got an upset or two down the road. That well, remember Sam Malcolm's back. So he, I don't think he was able to play this past weekend, just came back from Japan. So, you know, Rob Brow is back. They've got a couple other guys that I think that, that are going to be joining them. So, you know, I think, I you know, it, it, that, that could end up being an upset. You're right. That it'll be interesting to see that roster all right nola at new england i know do you, do you bet against nola on the road anymore <laughs> like well new england new undefeated england at right. home yeah new so england. someone sees and ends on this game that's my that's thought. right no no i think that's right i think i think if if you lose um i think i think your season's done um, so you gotta ask yourself it's like a where, game. yeah where are Nola strong? Where are New England strong? And then where are they weak? And which one hurts the other one so, most? So I think that I think Nola have a strong defense. I think they can. I think they've got a great line out, um, and they've got a really good scrum. Uh, I think um, New England have a better attack. And I think New England can score more points. So it's like if this is a close game where both teams are in the teens, I think I think like Nola probably win that game. Um, I think if if it ends up being, you know, like in the 30s, you would think that New England would. Yeah, I'm kind of, yeah, that's a tough one. All right, I mean, Utah I think, I think, at I think, I think Houston. Be... Oh, hold it, hold it. Did we call that one? We've got to pick them, right? Or is that, are you doing that? Are you doing no at New England? I'm doing, I am doing that one. I can't pick it, sorry. Okay, all right, right. So, that, oh, I'll pick it. So, so just to help Nate Osborne, right on on his like on the road like two months i'm gonna pick new england and i'm gonna say new england wins 25 23. but that's basically a pick for nola yeah yeah fair enough fair enough all right uh utah houston saturday night down there at aviva so interestingly i think houston made some selections because they really want to win this game it's their last home game I think I think it's sort of like the last chance to play in front of their of, of their crowd. But this is a must win again for Utah, right? I mean, it's probably not a must win, but it's a win when you know because they lose so many players to the to the um, international window. It's only one game that they're going to lose, um, also one game where they're going to be away. But I think it's a really really important game. So I think this is Utah, but I think Houston play really well. I think Utah wins this 33-30. Yeah. I mean, I mean, to. I mean, I don't know where I don't know where Houston gets their thirty points, but I feel like that the, the, like they're going to be competitive in this game. Mate, they're pretty, they're going to have the professor's tactics on loop in the locker room all week in the gym. Do this, and we're going to be fine. We're going to score some drives. I don't know if you saw um, they put up a piece to celebrate Sam getting to hundred points, and Diego Mano, their number eight, had a funny where he goes, "Congrats, great! Can we stop kicking for post now and start scoring tries?" So that's uh, that's pretty sharp. Yeah, that was good. I like that one a lot. Uh, yeah, you, I, call this one, you, would, right? you would. I would say Utah. Yeah, I was so impressed with what they did in New York on the road. And, but but um, but they're so another team a little for. bit like Nola. Like at some point, can they mentally repeat this? I mean, I mean, like, yeah, I like think they can. Behind takes a lot out of you, right? They're, they're, yeah, they're the cardiac kids. So you, you build belief, but it's also pretty exhausting. Yep, yeah, and you've got you know five players leaving the next week, so uh, a big it's a big it's a big ask for both the Shawns. 
right. Pitters and Davies to, to get them up again after a long road trip to New York and home and then back to Houston. That's a, that's a long flight too from Utah to Houston. So it's a tough one. But yeah, Utah, just because so much on the line to play for. 